Hey everyone, in today's video I am going over Delve for Sizic Battlegrounds. In this video I'm going to be going over the NMs that you're going to be encountering and some of the mechanics that they do because uh, all of these NMs have a gimmick. So if you want a little more information just about Delve overall, go back and check out my other video that's talking about Delve. I go into details about how it works, uh, unlocking Delve, and all the other things that go into that. So just to touch on it real quick, this is the map for Sizic Battlegrounds for Delve. Uh, to get access to the zone, just go out to Sizic Battlegrounds, and it's pretty much right in the middle of the map where the veil is, which is the entrance to enter Delve. Uh, the closest uh, Biv is uh, Biv 1, so you can use that to warp there and then go there. On um, then all you would have to do is have the leader talk to the veil as long as they have the key item that they got from the NPC then you should be good to go to enter you can look at the map here to see what the you know zone's going to look like for delve and you can see that it's sectioned off into three different sections you need to kill the first three nms or enough time needs to pass and then the section will open up for section two and then you need to kill the two NMs there, or again, enough time needs to pass, and then you can go to section three, which is where the boss is gonna be. Or you can trade uh, one of the items that you get from the NM, from fighting the NM outside the zone, so that way you don't have to fight them in there. But as I said in my other video, I don't recommend you do that if you're trying to get plasm, because there's a multiplier for every NM you kill. So you might as well kill every NM, especially since it's easy. Okay, first NM I want to touch on is Unfeathered Twitherm. It's basically a flock of butterflies. I'm sure I'm pronouncing the name wrong. Uh, it uses all the standard moves that, you know, the regular mobs do. Uh, it does gain access to a move under 50% called Smoldering Swarm. That is a high AoE uh, damage move that puts on a strong... Uh, burn effect so dot um so you want to have your healer make sure they're on top of that try and remove that and make sure they heal uh it casts like a ton of different spells including you know aoe gravity paralyze bind silence slow dispel uh it also will cast arrow spells aoe spells so that's you know the most of its moves. The one gimmick for this NM is that it has uh, at certain HP points it'll have damage reduction and you will do very little damage to it. To break it you need to do a certain skill chain and it's going to be random which element skill chain you need to do. So the best thing to do to try and break it is either use light or darkness. If you do like light and it still has the damage taken, then just do darkness considering it, came, it contains all the elements. It'll knock the effect off. So next NM that I want to talk about is Subdernal Chapui. And I'm sure I'm selling that wrong, but uh, basically the Cricket NM. Uh, this NM, in terms of gimmicks, I've not really seen any. After reading and doing some research, it says if you have poorly timed weapon skills or abilities that do damage, he will essentially react by getting a ton of evasion. Now, I don't know if because of its you know older content and accuracies you know now significantly higher than it was released that if it does this it doesn't have an effect because if it gains this evasion buff from what i'm reading you can't remove it it's not something that can be dispelled but i've not had any problems you know with this nm basically we blow it up uh that's really the only gimmick to it uh from what i'm reading they suggest you really only weapon skill when it's casting spells because that way you don't have a chance of getting the you know evasion up on the nm but like i said i've never had problems with it and we typically just blow it up um it also does the same thing that all the crickets do that you know if you do damage to it after it does a TP move within two to three seconds, it's not going to do any damage. So there's that, but that's about it for, you know, that NM. 
Next NM that I want to touch on is the Transcendent Scorpion. Uh, this is pretty simple and basic mechanic. Uh, below 50% HP, it gains access to several TP moves. Uh, one of them being Earthbreaker, which is a wide range and high damage AoE attack. Uh, the thing about it is, a lot of these TP moves, including Earthbreaker, if the mob has a debuff on it, will do little to no damage. However, after it does a TP move, it will remove all its debuffs, so you'll need to reapply them. If it doesn't have a debuff when it does a TP move, it'll do really high damage. So really just the gimmick is, is keep debuffs on it. As soon as it does a, a TP move, make sure debuffs applied. Obviously, Dia or Bio are recommended because you can't be resisted, and then it has uh, you know one debuff move. So either your healer or whoever your mage is, just have them keep an eye on you know when it does a TP move, cast Dia and then just move on that's pretty much it for the transcendent scorpion next item that I want to touch on is Maz top and this is as I like to always say Gannat just because of the spelling I know it's Nat but I always like calling it Gannat just for fun anyway this guy can be a pain in the butt uh, and I will be going into why it has all standard uh, Nat moves uh, you need to make sure that you are doing relatively in the same range a mix of damage if you do like all just physical damage and don't do any elemental damage or magic damage uh it's going to essentially punish you it's going to then do you know a high damage move and that can definitely wipe the party i've definitely been in groups before that have wiped to this and i think i was on scholar i was out of range and just ended up gravitating and dotting it to death uh, but it was almost dead anyway so you just really need to make sure that you kind of have a balance of damage uh, so that way it won't essentially punish you for that the only other thing about it is you don't want to like super debuff this mob because it has a TP move or it will transfer all its current debuffs to all the players within range of the move so like put dia on it and that's probably about it and then i would just you know try and uh dps it down just like i said make sure you're using a mix of moves and that's pretty much it for you know that nm hey, like i said he's annoying but he's not too bad as long as you you know mix up your uh, damage types and the last non-boss nm is taxit which is you know one of those giant butterflies, a worm, or whatever they're called. Uh, I've never been good at pronouncing that. But uh, this guy, he is extremely easy, but at the same time, he is a major pain in the butt. And the reason is, he spawns with having 99% damage taken reduction so he's going to take little to no damage from you from a while what ends up happening is every time he uses a tp move i think it's called like exvulsation or something like that essentially the move heals him and it heals him a decent bit after he uses that move he will lose i think it's five percent of his uh damage taken down so then he would go from 99 percent to 94 percent and essentially you just need to feed him tp until he spams the move at least 10 times at that point you should be able to do enough damage to burn him down there's really not much else to say about this fight because other than that he does standard moves and none of his moves are really threatening it's just a matter of you need to just feed him tp until he does the move enough until you can do enough damage to burn him down really just the annoying thing about it is this nm just takes time because of the damage taken so you know just do what you got to do and you know take him out all right let's now jump on to the boss which is a giant bee his name is was it Muingwa? i'm probably saying that wrong i think that's probably the funnest part is trying to pronounce all these different nms as i'm going through but uh this guy's kind of tricky he won he has his hp hidden until he does a tp move which is incessive apothesis um apparently when it does that he does that he will briefly show his hp um 
so pretty much his HP is hidden. It's not really a big deal. Uh, once you get his HP down, he starts to gain more uh, damage resistance. So, I mean, the best thing to really combat that is just to try and burn him down fast before it really becomes an issue. Uh, if you have any, like, you know, anything that doesn't actually, you know, uh, isn't affected by uh, damage resistance should be fine. Like, Requicast, I know, uh, you know, it won't be affected by the damage reduction. At 25, 50, and 75% of its HP it's going to do a move called Droning Whirlwind. And this move actually puts up a ton of shadows that you just have to take down through regular attacks. You can't just pop Diaga or any other AoE to remove it. While any AoE moves will go through and just damage the mob, it's not going to remove any shadows. And after it does Droning Whirlwind, it gets something like 20 plus shadows. He also has access to arrow spells, single target, and AoE, on top of having AoE, slow bind, paralyze, dispel, silence, and break. So you want to make sure that you're watching out for those. And really the only threatening thing is making sure that you take down the shadows fast, because if he keeps his uh, shadows up, he's going to do a high uh, damage conal move that also resets hate and will actually give uh, weakness. Other than that, there's, you know, not much else to say about it. It's a pretty easy NM. Typically, you know, we just melee burn it down and it's dead before anything's really a threat. At least that's how it's been in all the groups I've been in. And that's it for, you know, uh, Sizic Battlegrounds Delve. And I'll be working on, you know, getting out the rest of the delve zones and go in details for each nm like i did here thank you for tuning in supporting the channel uh if you got some value out of this make sure you hit the like button and may you have success in all you do